the two Adams. Were there two Adams? Genesis chapter 1, we have Adam. Not in the translation. We're going to go from the Hebrew, the HD, to get the HD. We call this the HD, right? We coined this here, the Hebrew definition, the Hebrew dimension. From the Hebrew perspective, get the HD right here. The two Adams. Were there, question here is, were there two Adams? And we're stating on the record that there were two Adams. Two Adams. We have Genesis chapter 1, Adam, Aleph, Dam, right? According to the text. And then we have Genesis chapter 2, Adam. Now, from the KJV, King James Version, the Western, the Gentile, White Anglo Saxon, Protestant, from the Gentile worldview, the Anglo American, English speaking worldview, Adam only appears in Genesis chapter 2. What many don't know is that in the Hebrew, according to the Hebrew, the 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 Ibrit, the Ibrit, or the the Yehudit, as it's more correctly called, but according to the the Hebrew, we have Adam, Aleph Dam, in the first chapter. So these two Adams, Adam, from the Hebrew Genesis or Bereishith, Bereishith, in beginning in Reishith, in Chokmah in the Hebrew Sophia in wisdom that's the that's the key to the first words of the Torah the first words of the Bible in Hebrew bereshith bereshith not really in the beginning but in beginning in hokmah in wisdom in reshith so in the first book of the Bible known as bereshith right or often called in the beginning the Sefer Bereshith, the Sefer, the Sefer, the book, in the, in wisdom, in Reshith. Get into the Reshith. Some of y'all are familiar with that from um, the, the Mishle Shlomo, the Proverbs, the Parables of Solomon. In the Parables of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 7, in the Hebrew, it has Reshith, that Chokma, Chokma, the Hebrew wisma, wisdom, right? The Hebrew Sophia. Right, is called Reishith. And in Mishle Shlomo, in the Proverbs of Solomon, the parables of King Solomon, chapter 8, she discusses her role, the divine, she call this the divine feminine, from the true Hebrew perspective. And this is why studying the Hebrew is so very important. We see many ones and ones are picking up on what L-O-J, the L-O-J, the line of Judah, you know, and what I and I have sought to, you know, encourage amongst the different Hebrews and Israelites, a real study of Hebrew, the real study of our Afro-Semitic, right, Hemito, Semitic, Shemito, Hemitic, Afro-Asiatic languages, and particularly in our study, right, as self-proclaimed Beta Israel, as the house of Israel, the Beta Israel over here of the West, in studying the language, the linguistics, the key of communication between man and man is language. The key of culture is language, is the linguistics. So even the scripture says in the beginning, right, in the beginning, right, was the word, the word, the word, the word was with Elohim, Hai Lehim, Hakadosh Baruch Baruch Hashem, and the word was, right, Hai Lehim, the power, Elohim, Hakadosh Baruch Baruch Hashem. But here, in speaking on the two Adams, we heard a reasonment conversation, right, on the YouTubes between two parties, and one was saying about our father Adam, and the next one was saying, well, they kind of disagree with that right there, our father Adam, right? And they said, what do you mean by Adam? So they got into an Adam, <laughs> an Adam discussion, right, considering, you know, what was said about our father Adam. And on a certain level, I'm I think I actually agree with the one who said that they will pump, pump the brakes on that right there on a certain level, even though from a conventional Western Gentile Judeo-Christian whitewash perspective, this is what many religious or people who are, have some familiarity or heard things about the Bible or Christianity or so forth and so on believe based on the Judeo-Christian, the whitewash. Let's point that out too, because it's in the popular Right, but popularly wrong view, 
that ones see Adam, when we mention Adam right here and we mention the two Adams, some would only see this two Adams connection right here in the sense of um, there's only one Adam. People say, well, there's only one Adam. So here we're going to prove to you that there's the two Adams. So are the two Adams, Adam, Genesis chapter 1 and Adam, Genesis chapter 2, are they related? Right? Are they related? Are they different? Is there any connection? We say that the two Adams, Adam, Genesis chapter 1, and in Genesis Bereshit chapter 2, in the Aleph and the Beit chapter, the first and second chapter, these two Adams are related. Even they're related in the Hebrew by the name of Aleph Dam, Aleph, Dalet, and Mim Sofit. Right, the final meme or the A D M Aleph Dalet and the meme or meme meme or meme. All right, so here, here, here. Let's let's first of all get into the root of this right here and bring out the scripts to the scripture. Right. Okay, so to the law, to law and to the testimony. Right, that's what said. If they speak not like this, it's because there's no light in them. So to the law, ha Torah and to the testimony so here 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 so here we you can see we just put in the search Adam right Adam so now here we're using the um, my sword software and we have the settings set up so that it will basically search the underlying text right? the underlying text so we're going to the source code so when we speak about the Hebrew we're going to the source code of the Bible that means everything that we have you know, heard or been made to believe or believe is true, you know, or might be true, you know, from an English um, speaking perspective, it truly might be true also from the, the Hebrew perspective, but we don't know. We don't know until we really study to, to shoot ourselves approved. So here we have Adam. We have 34 verses found in the scripture for Adam. Now you notice that the first verse that popped up the first verse that pops up right here, here, here is Genesis chapter 2, right? It's Bereshith, the Kuful, the, the Beit, the second chapter, chapter 2, verse 15. And Yahuwah Elohim took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. This is the first verse. Now, note right here that you don't find Adam anywhere, right? Adam is nowhere in the, the text, the translated text. Now, of course, it's connected with the H120. We have Adam. So you see Adam right there. Adam, the BDB, Browns, Drivers, Briggs definition is man, mankind, man, human being, right? And then we see the A, the B, the C, the D. <coughs> and it's at the, um, the C that we have Adam where it says the first man right the first man and then the d has a city in the jordan valley so there's a city in the jordan valley that is also named adam right then here from the strong's definition from the h119 ruddy that is a human being an individual or the species so therefore adam both can refer to the individual man as it said the first man adam but also referring to the um, human being in the in general, right? Human being in general, Adam. Now, after the colon and the hyphen, right, is some of the places that the word is found in different constructions. You know, it says another and hypocrite and common sort and low. You see where it says low, man, mean, of low degree, person. Now, I want you to note right there where it says after the colon, two dots on top of each other and the hyphen, when you're looking at Strong's definition, just teaching and helping the brothers and sisters and ones who are studying to how to read these. Now, you can read this, but now how to interpret this properly. After the colon and the hyphen is how the word is found. So in some places, another, X, another, another word and another, right, is also the Adam link. Hypocrite also is the Adam link. Common sort, I want you to zoom in on common sort is the Adam, where it says X and low is the Adam. Man, then the open parenthesis says mean, mean. Then comma says of low degree, close parenthesis, then says person. 
So this means that when you're reading in the Bible and it says like common sort or it says low. In fact, there is a psalm that says, um, you know, um, to uh, uh, men of low degree, men of high degree. You might have come across men of low degree, men of high degree. Right. So where it says men of low degree, it says Bene Adam. Bene, sons of children of Bene, sons of children of Adam, children of Adam. Now the translator translates correctly in the KJV, it says of low degree, low and high, rich and poor all together. Low and high, then it says rich and poor. The low is the Bene Adam, is the sons of Adam, to say the common man, man in general, man in general. And then when it says Bene Ish, it says higher man. Now we touched on this in another vlog that we'll follow up on right here, here, here on this platform, Rastafari Yehudi, Rastafari Jews, and also elsewhere, where we go a little bit more into that detail that when the womb man was brought to the man, to, to Adam, the individual man named Adam, right, was brought to the, the man, he says that she is womb man, for she was, 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 was um, taken out of man. In the Hebrew says she should be called Isha, Isha, because she was taken out of Ish. So as we mentioned that elsewhere in the scripture, it says the low and high. The low, right, low man or the common man is the Bene Adam. The higher man is the Bene Ish. So it's interesting, right, that Adam why that Adam would say right here, let's see right here, and Adam said, is this verse right here? Is this verse, verse uh, 23, Genesis 2, 23, and Adam said, the individual man, so we have Adam in a twofold sense. Another very important point, there's the Hebrew, there's two truths, right? Some of the Chabarim, the Talmudim have heard me speak on the two truths, the two truths, there's two truths. There's, let's say, the physical, the five cycle and the metaphysical. There is like the outer and the inner, right? There is the lower and the higher, you know? There is the two truths, right? The law of the two truths. And simply put, the Hebrew, right, has a twofold, right, a twofold sense. Other languages, other linguistics also have something similar, but we have this here, especially in the Hebrew, proverbially speaking, in spades. This is why learning the language is so very, very important. So then we can then recognize where the translations and interpolations are correct or somewhat correct, but also attention to details, right? As a divinity is in the details where this different. So here in verse 23, where Adam said, this is now bone of my bones. If you read in the Hebrew, he says, zot, zot, right? Zot, you can see zot right here, zot, right? Zot, as you see what says this, zot is this. But in what context is this? Zolt, right? Because he calling her this. What does he mean by this? You see the part of speech, Zolt, is feminine. So he's saying Zolt. If he says Ze, Ze, Ze in Hebrew would be this, he, this like something or someone, that, the masculine, right? To say Zolt, Zolt, right? Is say this, she, right? So we can see right here where is this feminine, right? This. He says, this is now bone of my bones. He's speaking of the womb man, the Isha. And he says, flesh of my flesh. Where he says, she shall be called womb man. You see that word womb man? That's the H802. That's Isha, Isha. Now, Nashim is the plural sense of Isha in the Hebrew. But here he doesn't call her womb man, womb man like many womb men, but he calls it Isha. We note in our video, and the vlog is, well, who is the mother of Adam? Like, who's Adam's mother? <laughs> Did Adam have a mother? And who was his mother? We're going to answer. The Ras Ayadon is going to answer that according to the Hebrew scriptures. If that question is asked, well, based on the scripture, if Adam had a mother, well, we answer, well, who is Adam's mother? We'll give you her name, Adama, the Adama, right? But here he says this, right? Zot Isha. Isha. So he says Isha, right there, Isha, right? Because she was Lakach, Lakach, which means to be taken. She was taken from Ish. Ish. So Ish, right? Ish, man. Remember, man is in the higher sense, right? Man is in the higher sense, 
right? Adam is in the lower sense. So what's interesting is that Adam, though Adam is a title, a Hebrew title for humanity, the human being in general, that we have the first man, or at least the man here in the scriptures in the Hebrew narrative, right? In the Hebrew mythos, and we use that term mythos, going to bring out the meaning, the true meaning of mythos. A lot of people have a false you know, have a mythological idea of what a myth really is, right? But it, here in the two truths, he calls his woman, he doesn't say that, well, she shall be called Adama, because that's the name of his mother, right? According to the Hebrew scripture, but she shall be called Isha. So all, automatically he was identifying her with a higher type of a woman. This is interesting. What gnosis, what knowledge, what da'at did Adam, this man, that is called the first man. Now he's called the first man, but who was the first man? The first man, according to the scripture, also was called Adam, right? The first man, according to the scripture, was called Adam. Let's go right here, here, here. Let's look up man, right? Let us make man. Now note, this is what's so very interesting is that when we looked up Adam, it brought forward Genesis chapter, what, two, around 15 or so, where it says man. And that man, the underlying word, as we showed you, is the H120. Well, here, when we look up man, in Genesis chapter 1, the first chapter, at the 26th verse, it says, And Elohim said, Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Let them. You note that word right there? Let them. So are we speaking here about an individual man? Or we're speaking about the humanity in general? Here in Genesis Bereshit, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, where it says, And God, or and Elohim, Hailehim, the power, right, said, the powers said in singularity, he said, the powers, let us make, I and I, make us make man. And let's bring up that word man, Adam. Uh-oh. Here we have Adam. Here we have Adam in the first sense, right, in the first sense. In the first chapter, right? Adam as man in general or humanity in general. And it should be very clear, even the translation right here is basically structurally accurate. And Elohim said, let us make Adam, right? Let us make Adam in our image and after our likeness and let them, let who? Who? Them. Them. Not him. And say, let him have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. It doesn't say that. It says, let them, not let him, let them have dominion. Now, as we go furthermore, it says in the next verse, Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, so Elohim. Right, the power, the powers created he in the singularity. Elohim, the powers, he in the singularity created man. Notice that word, created. Here it says, let us make man. So the verb here is asa, 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 to make, to do. Right? Here in chapter 1, verse 27, the verb is bara as the same word that we find in the very first uh, chapter where it says Bereshith bara Elohim et HaShemayim wa et Ha'aret right? in beginning in Chokmah in wisdom created right? in singularity Elohim the powers the heavens and the earth the heavens and the earth or we could say the heavens and the farm <laughs> yes but here it says so Elohim created Adam Notice the word is the H120, Adam, created Adam in his image. Now the word own, you see the word own right there? The word own is italicized. It doesn't have a reference word. So basically what it reads in the Hebrews, let us, let, let, let Elohim, Elohim created man, Adam, in his image. In the image of Elohim created he, him. Now here we have the creation of he, him. And in the he, him, is male and female created he, them. So now this ties in to explain the verse previous, the 26th verse, 
right the 26th verse right here where it says and let them have dominion let them have dominion so what do we have here in genesis chapter one and here according to the reading it's the sixth day now as we reading genesis chapter one there's some who would like to tell you and like to make believe right that actually genesis chapter one and genesis chapter two is the same man and everything like that so forth and so on but there are some differences let's look at the verbs we have make created and then in genesis chapter two we have formed these are all different operative words we have make created and form and this is not poetry yes there is poetry yes there is allegory in the scripture but this is not poetry right here neither neither is it in its primary first sense is it allegory it's not allegorical here it's very direct that he said let us make man adam so here is Adam. This is what doesn't show up when one is looking at the like the KJV, the King James version of the Bible, or all the translated scriptures. The first time Adam appears by name is in Genesis chapter two, and this is what made many and makes many ones and ones, you know, Christians and others who read and study or at least read the Bible or familiar with the Bible or point to a Bible verse say, "Oh, Adam." just came about in Genesis chapter 2 but really Adam comes about in Genesis chapter 1 you want to view more let's view more let's view more let's compare this right here so here let's scroll down here to the Tanakh right here so here we have the Tanakh where it says why Yomer Elohim na ise Adam here it says why Yomer and he said right in singularity Elohim the power or in a direct sense the powers but whenever it's speaking about the true creator the true elohim it always speaks about the true elohim in singularity let's just point that out this is where a lot of folks get confused they say well elohim means gods elsewhere and yes elsewhere in the hebrew scripture it does point to the elohim acharim as its phrase is elohim acharim the Elohim, other people Elohim, the Elohim of others, not our Elohim. See, our Elohim, right, the true Elohim, right, we say the Elohim, the triunity, right, Elohim, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the One, right, Elohim, the triunity, the true trinity, right, the Hebrew trinity, right, the true power, the true God, the true creator, Right, and here in the Hebrew narrative, the Hebrew or the Elohim of the Ha Ibrahim, right, of the Hebrews, here it says, Wayomer, and he said, Elohim, right, the powers, the powers, he, Na is said, let us make, Na is said, Na ase, Na is said, Adam, Na is said, Adam. So let's just highlight the word Adam. That's the word Adam highlighted right there, right? Bit almenu, bit almenu, right? Right, in our what? In our image, kia demutenu, and after our demut, ki, as demutenu, as our likeness, right? We yerdu, we yerdu, and let them yerdu, let them have dominion, right? Let them have dominion, be a digat hayam over the fish of the hayam, ua the off and the off and the winged creature, the flying creatures, hashemai, right? Of the heavens, of the place, of the waters, that's what shamai heavens sehakim is the word for skies hashemai ua va behema and upon the behema the cattle right ua bekal and over all uh, and in all u bekal u bekal and in all haaret and in all the land and all the earthly plain ua bekal u bekal and in all or over all ha remes right the creeping right ha romes 
right? The creeping creepers, like the creeping creepers, the, the creepers creeping, right? Speaking about the creeping things all upon Haaret, upon the Aret, upon the earth, upon the earthly plane. So here we have Adam. So Adam here is in the general, generic sense. And let's recall this was on the sixth day. So here is the first Adam, right? Now, we're going through this right here because as we start to understand what the Hebrew is really saying, right, and really pointing to, as we look at science or scientific investigations and look at the accuracy of certain things that we find in what Martins call science nowadays, we find that the Hebrew scripture does not contradict any truths that we find scientifically. I'm saying that on the record that the Hebrew scripture does not contradict any truths that we find in modern scientific research. I say any truths. If it contradicts anything, either that scientific research is questionable or one's knowledge of the Hebrew scripture or one is just relying and going to the King James Version. This is what a lot of folks do. They'll point to a translation of the KJV, a verse here, a verse there, and they'll make an argument off of how it's been interpreted or interpolated. But then when we actually look at what the Hebrew scripture is actually saying, often we'll find that it's saying something completely different, sometimes even diametrically 180 degrees opposite of what it is saying. Just as we find right here that the first man here in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 is actually Adam, right? Let us make Adam, right? In our image, after our likeness, and let them, let them, yerdu, mm -hmm. let them have dominion, rada, yerdu, rada, to rule, to have dominion, to dominate, to tread down, to subjugate, to scrape out, how this word is brought forward in this translation primitive root to tread down to subjugate specifically to crumble off to come to dominion to make to have dominion right to prevail against to reign to bear to rule right even the sense of like to overrule right to overrule right now we're looking at these verses here we're looking at some of what the most ancient archaeology has shown us about so-called primitive man right about primitive man primitive man they say were hunters and gatherers right and their interaction with the living creatures right their interaction is known that man for a very long time and we're speaking beyond the six thousand years let's point this out right here when we're looking at genesis chapter one here at verse 26 and 27 we're speaking beyond the 6,000 years now we also touch on that you know speaking about time and how time is accounted and all these theories and ideas that have come into um, Bible you know studies and Bible arguments and, and biblical kind of discussions like the earth is 6,000 years old the Bible does not say that people say that about the Bible there are those people even some Christian authorities among the Gentiles, among the Europeans who have, uh, the white U Europeans, right, who have um, alleged and put forward those theories and ideas like Usher. We touched on that as well, Usher, right? So stay tuned on that. There's some more to come on those subject matters. Seeking to just articulate in a few category subject matters like this one here about the two Adams. Because as we understand Adam 1, Right, the first Adam, according to the Hebrew scriptures, the first book of the Bible, Bereshith, according to the Aleph chapter, the first chapter, in chapter 1, verse 26, 27, we have ancient man of incalculable, right, at least from our perspective, to calculate exactly how long, whether this was, as some people say, 100,000 years, right, whether it could have been, a, it could have been more than that. Because the scripture, when we look at the timing in the Bible, when the sun, the moon, the stars, which are used as time tellers, came into visibility, according to the fourth day, we already had three days before that where we cannot apply the same rule to time, right, to time, 
right? Now we could even go a little deeper into carbon dating and some things that even the carbon dating experts, when you get deeply into the research, have said concerning carbon dating, why there can be false positives in carbon dating, right? The best thing that can be dated usually is human you know, animal tissue right one of the best things but other kind of uh, you know substances can also be relatively dated but things like inanimate objects like you know rocks and stones and you know trees are somewhat living yes trees are living so they also can be dated and it's been proven right that the creation is well over right six thousand years even our ethiopic Right, the Ethiopian timekeeping rates this year or this present, and hear the words carefully, this present Earth age, this present Earth age is roughly 7,500 and I think 14 years as of this particular year, this present Earth age. But that counting, that counting right there connects with Adam in Genesis chapter 2. That counting. Right. So when we see like even the Hebrew counting is like 5000 years and something, 5000 years and change. Right. We have other nations that also have ancient counting. I think the Hebrew counting, if we were to get or the Jewish, as some would call it, counting is 5782, 5782. And that's roughly relatively rated. They might rate that to Adam, right, to the time of Adam. But we see that more, you know, logically as relating to the time of Abraham, if anything, to the time of Abraham. But the Ethiopic is 7,514, this present Earth age. And that is counting since like the God of Aden and Adam of Genesis chapter 2. But Genesis chapter 1, let's just prove this right here, why these are two different um, atoms. They are related. These two atoms are related, but these two atoms are different. Proof 1. When was the first man, according to the Bible, created? On the sixth day. Right? We have the first man on the sixth day because it says right down here, let's go down here, it says right here at the end of the chapter, Genesis chapter 1, and Elohim saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. It was Tob Ma'od, the Hebrew Tob Ma'od, my very good, and evening and morning were the sixth day. Now, evening and morning is also very important to timekeeping because in the Western world, we keep time or time is kept in a backward way, right? It's like when the Bible says they shall seek to change times and laws, right? The evening is the beginning of the day and then the morning. In other words, when Sabbath, for example, when Shabbat begins, it begins Friday evening, right? Friday evening, the evening of Friday is actually the beginning of the Sabbath day, at least from the evening part, right? The evening, and then we get the morning or the daylit part of the day, right? The 12 hours in the day. Know ye not that there's 12 hours in a day? That's another place and way they have confused time. They say there's 24 hours in a day. But if day is referring to the daylit hours, right? Then we have 12 hours in the day. And the evening scrolls into the period that we say there is no night, rest of mine we say there's no night but in the beginning there was no night there was evening and morning you do not find the word the operative word for night here so evening and morning this points to time very good it points to Elohim's assessment of his creation what he had created and what he had made and this also points to the day in which Adam them so we have Adam them in Genesis chapter 1, right? And then in Genesis chapter 2, right? After, right, the Sabbath day. Now note this as well. When we get to Genesis chapter 2, right, we are going to after the Sabbath day, right? In Genesis chapter 2. Let's go to chapter 2 right here. And it says, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day Elohim ended his work, that he made had made and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had made 
right? So Elohim, the powers, he, the singularity, right? And Elohim blessed the seventh day and sanctified, set it apart, because that in it he rested from all his work that Elohim created and made. Then it goes into these are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day. Note that key word right there. In the what? In the day that Yahweh, Yahweh, hey, Elohim, the powers, made the earth and the heavens. Now that's an interesting verse. Ain't that an interesting verse? In the day. And say in the days, it says in the day. Right in the day. Let's just check this out just to make sure that we're saying the right thing right here. Let's go down here in the day. Let's go to this verse right here. It says, Ele toldot, Ele Behi Bar Am, Beyom, right? Behi Bar Am, right? In, in, um, in He creating, in He creating them. Be he bar am be yom in the yom. I didn't say yamim, it says yom in the day. Right in the day is salt, a salt, a Yahweh, Yahweh, Elohim, a ret, a we shemaim that Elohim created earth and heavens. Now it's interesting that the, the, the thing that we know that's different is the word order. Here it puts the word order of eret. And also here is without the definite article, the definite article ha, right? It says elsewhere, et ha shamayim, wa et ha aret. Here it says eret we shamayim, right? But it says in the day, the key, the, the, the key thing right here in the day. It implies, what's, what's implied here is that the heavens or the earth and the heavens were created in one day. See, what we actually have in Genesis chapter 1, and it's amazing when we talk about reading comprehension, right? Because as we read through this and studied through this, the interesting thing that we note right here is that every day's activity that we get in Genesis chapter 1, the only place in the whole chapter where it speaks about creation, right, is in the very beginning, the first verse, right? Bereshit bara Elohim. And also on the sixth day, right, concerning Adam, concerning them, and created, it says he created him, right, created him. So the verb created in Genesis chapter 1, right, only appears, right, in the very beginning where it speaks about in beginning, Bereshit bara Elohim, et ha shamayim, et ha aret, and in wisdom, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. So right there, that one verse, it sums everything up. And then what we get in the verses after that very first verse in Bereshit, in Genesis, first chapter of Genesis, is creation, right? Or those things that were already previously created being brought forth. What we get is a reappearance, a reappearance. And this is what points to the true interpretation that Genesis chapter 1 is speaking of the overview of creation. And then in some time past, thousands if not millions of years ago, there was some cataclysm. There was some cataclysm. And that in the verses after Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, we get the creation, the various um, um, elements of creation reappearing. We get this especially on the fourth day, where it doesn't speak about the sun, the moon, and the stars being created. Just go through Genesis chapter 1 every day. And the only day that we find the verb that Elohim creates, right, besides Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, right, is in Genesis chapter 1, I think was it verse uh, 27, right, because in verse 26, it says, let us make, make Asa, right? And then in Genesis chapter 27, um, Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, verse 27, it says Bara. It uses the Bara root. But then when we get to Genesis chapter 2, where it speaks about the man being formed, right? We get the Yatsar, 
Yatsar, Yatsar word right there. So right there from studying the Hebrew, we know we are dealing with attention to details. Right? And ones that don't make attention to details will sometimes come up with the craziest questions, the craziest confusions that they would think, oh, they've caught the Bible or caught God or this is the Hebrew or the Israelite. It's all wrong. And this is what we call they, they are imagining. They, they have imagined an error. They've imagined an error. And the KJV, King James Version, and lack of good study, you know, study principles kind of, they, they back this up, right? So here, when we get to Genesis 2 and 4, it says, In the day that Yahweh Elohim made, note the word right there, made the earth and the heavens. So in the in, in beginning, in beginning, heavens and earth were created, right? See, people look at this as a, like a piecemeal creation. And, and I give thanks to Ainai Chabarim, Rastafari, Rastafari Chabarim, Chabarim, Talmudim. Um, one of the brothers, I think it was our chaplain, Rasimor, right? Uh, duly elected <laughs> chaplain for the Ethiopian World Federation Corporate. I think he had shared something, or it was another member that had shared something concerning. Um, where his match, he said that the earth was not created, like the creator did not create it like piecemeal. And that's interesting because some would have an idea that Genesis chapter 1 is talking about a like a, a piecemeal creation. Well, on this day, a little bit was created this day, and then like he had to rest or something, and the next day, a little bit was created this day, and then the next day, a little bit was created. No, we get in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, Right, where it says Bereshith bara Elohim, right? In beginning in Reshith and Chokmah and wisdom, Bara created he in singularity Elohim the powers, right? Et Hashemayim the heavens, where Et Haaret and the earthly plane. Boom, it was it was done. So we're speaking of a distant. This is why the whole time thing is a kind of a satanic monkey wrench. Right, because they're playing monkey business because they recognize that you know many Christians on basic Bible quizzes will get a lot of things wrong. Right, they, I just saw a survey or something where they said about how a lot of Christians, you know, be doing poorly on a lot of Bible, um, you know, Bible quizzes and stuff like that. It, it didn't surprise I, you know, especially seeing that I was somebody that used to go to church, you know, with my earthly my mother and and some of the other peoples back then and you know and we wasn't into it and we got into it because of the light of Rastafari and as we started to get into the Bible and reading and trying to figure out things we said Chan this is interesting I never heard these things before you know you you know what I'm saying so it just shows that even though we spent you know some time in our early formative years you know on Sundays and maybe a few other days you know being involved in Christian church related activities it was only when we started to study and research the Bible you know on you know I'll say more or less on our own or apart from that environment that we started to really as they say appreciate be, be like appreciative you know you know appreciate love not appreciate hate we started to appreciate love it much much more right so study so we have the seventh day you remember now the seventh day comes and goes right all right the seventh day then it now goes through a summary right verse 5 it says and every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew for Yahweh Elohim had not caused it to rain up on the earth so notice this at this particular time there was no rain on the earth and it says there was not a man now notice this word right here the man you see man here in Genesis chapter 2 verse 5 man is the H120 we click on that it's Adam uh-oh uh-oh are we following what is being described in the in the in the text the subtext the verse the verse is the subtext do we see what's being described here in this subtext 
right? It says that every plant of the field before it was in the earth, before, and every herb of the field before it grew. Why? For because Yahweh, hey, Yahweh, right? Elohim had not caused it to rain upon the earth. So there was no rain upon the earth at that time, right? And that's before the plant of the field, right, was in the earth, and before the herb of the field, right, had grown, because Elohim had not caused it to rain. And here's the key not a man, there was not a Adam. Now notice that phrase right there, not an Adam. Remember what we were saying here? That in Genesis chapter 1 it says, created them. Created them. It's a more general level right there. And that was the sixth day. Then we had the seventh day. Now here, right, we know that we're not on the seventh day, right, in this narrative because there's no work, right? There's no work, right? For, for, for high, high Lahim, ha Elohim. There's no work, right? He rested on the Sabbath day, so there's a rest. So we must be beginning here, right, at the proverbial second week, right, or the second week so-called of creation. I just say proverbially speaking. Not saying that literally was the second week, but we must be beginning after, right, like the third day, on the third day. Because remember, there's Friday, right? There's Saturday, right? And now, here we must be at Sunday, and Sunday would be the first day, properly. Hebraically, we don't call the first day Yom HaRishon, is a day of the Rishon, the head day, the Rosh, Ras. Ras in the Amharic, Rosh in the Hebrew, right? So it's a Yom HaRishon, it's the first day, right? So here we're getting a narrative, and we're here we're finding out that there was not, Adam was not where, right? There was not an Adam to till the ground. Now, notice the word ground. The word ground is Adama, right? Simply put, Adam's mother, right? The Adama, right? Notice they say Mother Earth, Mother Earth, right? It's all about Mother Earth. Well, there's the Adama right there. So there was not an Adam to take care of the mama, take care of the Adama, right? There, there was not that reddish brown <laughs> man to take care and till the reddish brown ground. But verse 6 says, there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the reddish brown ground, the Adama. So the Adama, that reddish brown ground. Now that reddish brown ground, just note this right here, is the same as the Kemet. Because Kemet comes from Ethiopia. That's going to be the next vlog. I, I just want to ride up with that as a subject matter, as a talking point. That the Kemet comes from Ethiopia. The Kemet comes from the Ethiopia, simply put with the inundation of the Nile. It brings down the now that reddish brown ground or that Adama. Remember Adama, reddish brown, and we've already made the connection and give thanks to others also following up on some of our initial research over like two decades ago of linking that reddish brown, right, the color, right, with the humanity and the complexion of black and brown peoples, right, to also prove that Adam, right, in the beginning is a black and brown man as the genetics and science tells us that black peoples coming out of what they call Africa or the continent, right? The dominant genes, the recessive genes, and the whole genealogy basically right there, right? And a lot of the European scholars are, you know, doing a little bit better to really prove that, well, we always thought that the people who inhabited Europe were like white complexion people. But now what they're finding out that actually the people who so-called first inhabited Europe based on their archaeological and other studies were actually reddish brown, were actually melanated people. We could say basically, they don't like to say it, but we could basically say they were black people, right? They were basically black people, right? So that, that's an improvement there. It's, it's honesty, because if we really want to know the truth, all of us as humanity, then we just have to go to these particular points and, and bring out the truth. So here in verse 7 it says, And Yahweh hey Elohim formed. So now here we have the word formed. Formed is the word Yatsar. 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 Now Yatsar is an interesting word, Yatsar. Right? Because Yatsar, right, here has to do with some people believe the creation of man. Some people believe the creation of man. But note that the key word, there's a couple of key things about this verse right here. In Genesis chapter 1, it speaks of 
of Jah, Jehovah, in the creative aspect of Elohim, of the powers, right? What we like to call the nature of natures, right? But here it adds the covenant name, Yahweh. Hey. Here it has Yahweh, Yahweh, the covenant name, Yahweh Elohim formed. He Yatsar, Yatsar. He formed who? Adam, right? See, it's still the 120 right there, the 120 Adam. He formed Adam, right, of the dust, of the dust. What's the dust? The Afar. And as we go into some details in the other video about Adam's mama, right, who was Adam's mother, you know, or did Adam have a mother and father? We touched on the Afar. The Afar is one of the oldest um, um, people groups based on modern conventional scientific study. This also backs up the Hebrew narrative, the Hebrew scriptures as well. We have Afar. Now, Afar is the dry earth, dust, the ground, ashes, you know what I mean? On that level, the powdered dust, powdered gray, you know, dust, earth, ground, mortar, powder, rubbish, you know, or the clay, the clay, many properly interpret this as the clay, but the fact that it mentions the Afar, Afar, Afar in the Afro-Semitic, Afro-Asiatic, Hamito, Hamito, Semitic, Shemito, Hamitic, right, in the languages like Hebrew, Gutters, Ethiopic, Amharic, the language of the King of Kings, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, we have the word Afar, Right? Both meaning, in a twofold sense, the word Afar can mean the dust, like the dust of the ground, right? The dust can mean the clay, right? The mud, the clay of the ground. And it also refers to an ancient stock of people, right? The Afar, Afar. As we study the Afar much more, it brings out a lot of clarity, historically, contextually, of what is going on here in Genesis chapter 2. Right, what peoples we're speaking about in Genesis chapter 3 as well, in Genesis chapter 2, especially right in the beginning. Right, so the Afar, they are the red Afars and the white Afars. The red Afars are the reddish brown Afars. Interestingly enough, the white Afars, right, like we have the dark and the light, in other words, the reddish brown, the dark, and the light, as we have the Kemet is that reddish brown ground. In the Hebrew, we call the Kemet the Adama, right? In the Hebrew, right? So we're bringing this out. There's some Lionai teachings right here, here, here. The Lion of Judah teaching, Rastafari Jews, Ainai Ras Iadonis here. So Jehovah Elohim formed. So there's a whole different route to the idea of form, right? Man of the dust of the ground. So formed Adam of the Afar of the Adama. So verse 7 is saying that Yahuwah, the covenant, right? He who be, who he be, the Elohim. So here, with the forming of man, or should we say the reforming of man? This is the key point. Is it the forming of man here? What we find by comparative study, even in the Ethiopic and even in the King of Kings Bible, along with the Hebrew here, the sense of forming here, right, is a sense of reforming reforming so man adam was reformed right from that original tribe of people the afar right of the adama of the reddish brown ground right and breathe into his nostrils the breath of life so the breathing into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul now here's a couple of questions we have to ask right here is this a creating of man or is this a reforming of previous humanity? Is this a reforming of the Adam from the beginning? We cite this and we see this here as a reforming of the Adam from the beginning, the them. So we get, we get him here, right, because of them there, right? So thus explaining the two Adams right here, right? Right? And breathe into his nostrils the breath of life. Right? Some interpret this here, and this can be brought out, a more spiritual, a spiritual consciousness. Had previous humanity lost their spiritual consciousness? Was previous, is this where real evolution 
the real evolution beyond what Darwin could even conceive of, right? But he did point to some interesting points, right? But the real evolution, the spiritual, we see this as a spiritual evolution, the beginning, the first lights, right, of the spiritual <laughs> evolution. Yes, I <laughs> give thanks, Priest Isaac, the spiritual evolution. <laughs> give thanks. I hope that I check this out, Priest Isaac's Institute. Yes, I. The spiritual evolution, right, of primitive humanity. So Genesis chapter 1, we have primitive humanity dated at thousands, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years, based on archaeology. But now, based on this present earth age, this present cycle, when we say the present cycle, we're basing this Hebraically, the present cycle of humanity, right, over the past, we say, this eighth the eighth millennia over this past, we say, rounding it off to 8,000 years. So when some have talked about 10,000 BC, right, there's a lot of truth to this idea of 10,000 BC. And it says, and Yahweh, hey, the Elohim, right, planted a garden eastward in Eden, right? So once want to find the garden, we have sought to locate Eden, Aden. And it's interesting in the Horn of Africa, there's the Gulf of Eden, the Gulf of Eden, right? Right there in the Horn of Africa. You know about Plan, um, Pangea, right? Pangea. When we're looking at this, we should consider Pangea. Now, although archaeology, not archaeology, but geology might say that these, the tectonic plates, right, were switched or, or shifted, you know, were shifted, um, thousands of years ago, right? Maybe even a hundred thousand of years ago. We still put this as a connection of the Eden. When we look at the Eden, the Eden, the large majority of the Eden was what we call Africa. But the garden was in the Far East Africa, right? Based on our research, what we're finding in our research in Far East Africa, we'll link it to that region of the world that they call the Tigris Euphrates. But the connection with the Horn of Africa, the connection with the rivers coming out of even Havila, right, and also Gihon and Ethiopia also needs to be put into the connection. But that's more detail going into what and where was the garden and what and where was Eden. But here it says, and there he put the man, the, the who? The Adam, right, the Adam, right, whom he had formed. So what we have here is not the Adam who he had made, is not the Adam who he had created, but here in Genesis chapter 2 is the Adam whom he had formed. Is the Adam whom he had formed. There's something very interesting here too when we start to look at, right, the language, the linguistics right here. Um, let's look at this. Here we have Ha Adam, right? You see right there, it has Ha Adam, right? It has Ha Adam, the Adam. Right, giving much more specifics, right? Much more specifics here as well. It has Ha Adam. Just want to show you in verse seven has Ha Adam. The the highlighted Hebrew word Ha. The first letter is Ha, which is the definite article for, for the, the Adam. Right? It says the Adam. Right? Let's go over here as well, right here too, and here in verse um, five. It just says an Adam, right? Um, an Adam, and there was not an Adam. This here Adam is just the general Adam. And what's interesting is that this is consistent now as we look at Genesis chapter 1 in the Hebrew use, right? Genesis chapter 1 in the Hebrew use right here. So here it's saying right here, and there was not, um, let's see right here, these are the generations of the heavens and the earth and they that they were formed. Let's go over here. Um, and there was not, okay, nothing, nothing had grown. Okay, here, right here, it has and and with Adam. And there was not Adam, Ayin, right, La Ebod, to work or to serve at Ha Adama, right, to water or to serve. There was no Adam, right, there was no man. Right, to serve the Adama, to serve, for lack of a better word, the Kemet or that reddish brown ground. Remember, the Kemet comes from Ethiopia. The Kemet 
in ancient Mitzrayim, ancient Egypt, comes from Ethiopia. I'm going to point that out as well. So right here, 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 the two, the two atoms. Right? So once again, pointing out the two atoms was a little bit longer right here than we expected, brothers and sisters. But here, a little reasonment on the two atoms, the atom of Genesis chapter 1, general humanity, thousands, right, if not millions of years ago, and the atom of Genesis chapter 2, especially ex since the expulsion. Because, because of the time factor, Something changes with the time when that first, we could say, couple, right, Adam, where, where Ishto, where Ishto is put out and they have to return. Remember, it said that Adam returned, right, to land. It almost like implies you're going to go back to your people, you're going back to such and such. This also explains why there were beings, right, or people, <laughs> right, why there were other people, right, why there were other people. This is very clear. People have asked this question, and it's because of the two atoms. People only see the second atom, or rather, you know, the yeah, the second atom. This is why it's interesting that in the New Testament it says that the first atom, right? The Toma Adam, referring to the Adam in the, the garden, and then it says Yeshua is the is the last Adam. Right? But what we see right here in Genesis, there is the Adam that underlies the text. And that Adam them, and there's Adam him. Simply put, there's Adam them, and there's Adam him. So man was reformed. Man was reformed. So it's like a man was chosen. In the same sense of what was done with Adam, right? Especially in Genesis chapter 2 is what was done with Yisrael, Israel. Later on within the Hebrew scriptures. That there was the former ancient people, civilizations, even scripturally descended from Noach, from the Ankh, the Ankh man, Noach, right? We had Shem, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, right? We had the other nations, right? Ancient nations, Babylon, Sumer, Akkad, Mitzrayim, ancient Egypt, ancient Kush, and, and Ethiopia. You know, we had all these ancient civilizations that were already there when at the time of Abraham ha Ibri, ha Ibri, ha Ibri, ha Ibri, right? Abraham the Hebrew, right? And his descendants, right? Isaac and Jacob, the Hebrew Trinity, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the patriarchal Trinity. And then Jacob, Yaakov, called Yisrael. And now Israel is chosen, right? Coming out of Mitzrayim, coming out of the Mizraim, out of Egypt, the Hetkapata, Egypta coming out of Egypt, being called to be a nation, right? A nation of the priesthood, right? A theocratical, a theocratic government, a nation of the priesthood, and a kadosh goy, and a holy nation. So in the same way, this is where it has the verse. Let's see if we can bring up this verse right here, right? Just to show. So once again, we see this pattern in the pattern taking heed, right, taking heed to the patterns, right, so let's see right here, it's that verse where it talks about, um, right, um, that he chose, right, right, the inheritance, inherit, right, let's go to inherit, right, inherit, tense, boom, right there, there we go, Deuteronomy 32 and 8, when Elion, Elion, when the Most High, Elion, Right, the Lul, the Lul, when Elion divided to the nations. So the nations, right, the Goy or the Goyim. Remember, Israel is called to be a Kadosh, a set apart Goy. So Israel is the last of the nations. So they were already nations then. And then we get Yisrael, Israel, him. Right? Israel is my son, Israel, him. Same as we had in the very beginning. We get Adam, or the man, humanity, Genesis chapter 1, right? Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, 27, then. And then, after that, we get Adam, him. We get Adam, him. This is why this verse in Torah is very important, Deuteronomy 32 and 8. When Elion divided to the nations, the Goyim, their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam. Remember what we said about the B'nai Adam? 
is like common and general man in the Hebrew and understanding the Hebrew and reading the Hebrew intelligently is to say B'nai Adam. When we say B'nai Adam, like sons of men, and, and we use the term Adam, we're talking about humanity generally, right? G generally, right? So to speak about general humanity, right? Other than Yisrael is the B'nai Adam. To speak about Israel, right, in light of the covenant is to say B'nai Ish, B'nai Ish, son of the higher man. So here it says when he separated the B'nai Adam, to say the, them, the, the them, get it, them, he set the bounds of the people according of the people, to say of the other peoples, right, according to the number of the B'nai Yisrael, according to the number of the sons of Israel. So we can see this pattern, sons of Adam, the them, Right, Genesis chapter 1, and then we get in the same context, the same pattern, pattern recognition in Genesis chapter 2, the B'nai Yisrael, the B'nai Yisrael, or the sons of him, right? So we get the them and the him sense. I just want to share this with the eye, share this with y'all, so you can see this pattern here. So we're saying that, yes, from the best of science, Right? The Bible, the Hebrew Bible, right, goes to prove that it is right and accurate when properly pro properly understood. Because if you're reading the Bible, you don't understand these little nuances and differences. You're not reading it as, as the ancient Hebrews read it. So that means you're reading a King James Version and you're finding pe people finding all these imaginated, imaginative faults and flaws. They're finding this with a translation. And some of them are trying to strain the eye by going to some of the concordances and, and trying to, you know, take out separate words. But then you have to read these words based on their individual meanings in context, right, in the context of the verse, right? And then have to understand these verses in the subtext, right, in context with the supertext of the scriptures. This is why when it says rightly dividing the word of truth, here a little and there a little. We went to Genesis a little right there to explain the two Adams. And then now to prove the point right here, we went to the Torah of Debarim of Deuteronomy 32 and 8 to show the context. So as Adam individually, right, individually, as Adam individually in Genesis chapter 2 was chosen, right, from amongst them. So was Yisrael, the B'nai Yisrael, and we, the Beta Israel, right? Just as we say that, yes, technically speaking, we can be considered to be, quote, you know, uh, as Israel, right, an African tribe, so to speak, if we're talking about the continent called Africa, formerly known as Ethiopia, yes, you know, we can consider that, but we are also were called for a different purpose, like the Adam was called to tend right to the garden and to the adama right as yisrael was called right to keep and be a witness to the berit right to the to the covenant right to bear witness to the covenant right and to keep to guard to fulfill the law statutes and commandments right so in that same context so we had the pattern you see the pattern in the beginning and then as you start to recognize the patterns a lot much more will become clear, right? So we have Adam, right, of Genesis, Adam the man, Adam the individual, right, and Adam, the ancient Adamic, ancient peoples. And this explains a lot of the ancient artifacts that are being found, as well as looking at the scope of, well, what would, you know, from the sixth day, looking at the sixth day, there's a sixth day creation, and we're saying this, let me just make this clear before we just sign off right here. You know, we're saying this in context of what we have read and studied in the scripture. Not because of there's other philosophies about Adamic, you know, like there's other ones who have reasoned and maybe done some very good work. We're not dismissing their work, but this is not like a borrow. We're not borrowing off of their research. We're going into the Hebrew and even studying the Hebrew, right, here and there, right, and seeing the fuller picture. You know, seeing the fuller picture, putting into context, and then also expressing, right, these particular points, right? The two atoms, yes, there were two atoms, right? Two atoms, say Adam the group, 
my ancient, we could say, so-called, um, I won't say primordial, but ancient, primitive, primitive, my humanity, and then humanity of this present Earth age, roughly between, say, something of the order to eight to ten thousand years ago, right? Eight to ten thousand years ago, because the Bible does not say that, you know, the a thousand years, right? Every every day of create, it doesn't say that. Right? It doesn't say that. Yes, it says a day with the Lord is as a thousand years. Right? A day with the Lord is as a thousand years, but that needs to be understood in its Hebrew context. It's as thousands of years. Right? It's as a thousand years, but can be as a thousands of years. But stay tuned for the other video where we go into time. We talk about the time. Right? A little bit more on time. You know, because one needs to understand time and the fourth day. I think we have the video already up there on time and the fourth day. Check out that particular video about 6,000 years. Right? Like who says right, that, the, that the earth was created 6,000 years ago? It's not the Bible. It's other people, you know, looking at the Bible and thinking that they see that's what the Bible says. But that would make, you know, the scriptures a liar. But we have to say that they were in error. And those who follow that particular reasoning that every day of creation, right, was literally a literal thousand years, the scripture does not imply that. In fact, the sun, the moon, and the stars became visible on the fourth day. Therefore, in reality, as we count time, is by the rotation or the movements of the heavens and movement of the sun, moon, and stars. That's how we say day and night, right? If, if it didn't get light, if it didn't get dark, we wouldn't know whether it was day and night. If it just stayed dark for a week or two weeks, we, we wouldn't know what's going on, right? It will be totally confusing to us, you know? So that's what we get in the first couple of days, the first three or so days, few days, right? We get the first three days, where we don't have the sun, the moon, and the stars, right? So this implies, even right there, a series of un un in in indefinite time. I say indefinite time because to put it down to say, oh, was that's why even science, the scientists with their carbon dating and everything else, they can only give rough approximates. And then one group of scientists say, well, our approximate is 2 million years. Uh, uh, next one say, well, ours is 555,000 years. You know what I mean? They're basically all guesstimating and they're using science. Here, by using the Hebrew science, we're telling ones right up that it was not 6,000 years ago, heaven and earth was not created, right? There's a, there's a great difference between when the heavens and the earth were created in the day. According to the scripture, it was in a day that the heavens and earth was created, right? Was that just a thousand years? Could be. Might have not been. Maybe just a day. He says a day. We take him as a day. It was a day. It was a day. It was a day. Unless we have other evidence otherwise to say. But here, 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 the two atoms, right? The two atoms, right? There was the ancient primitive people. And then there was a chosen a chosen, we could say, man, a reformed man. Same thing we get with the children of Israel. There were other nations, right? The Egyptians were Kemetic, you know, Hetkapetapians, uh, Mitzrayim, they were a great nation. There was Babylon, where there were great big nations. There was Sumer, Akkad, there were other great nations. Yisrael, right, is like the last of all, you could say, the ancient nations. Right, you know, first shall be last, and the last shall be first. The same thing we have, that's, that's a biblical principle. Same thing we have in the case of the two Adams. Adam, Genesis 1, Adam, Genesis 2. Adam, Genesis 2 is the last one in that sense, the context, and he is first, right? But because of his failure, we get the last Adam in the person of Robeno Yeshua Hanotri, in the person of Yeshua ha, uh, of Nazareth, ha Notri, right? Justice of Nazareth. So here, 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 Shalom Chabarim, like, share, subscribe. Also check out the podcast, right? Blog Talk Radio, more in the description. Also check out Rastafari Students. You know, we're testing the means right now of um, podcasting. You know, our um, the sabbatical studies, the Rastafari 
podcast, the After the Shabbat podcast as well. It's at the site called Rastafari Student, Rastafari Student. So check it out as well. Um, check out the descriptions, like, share, subscribe. Shalom, Chabarim, Shalom, and here, here, here. It's Shabbat Eve, Shabbat, Shalom, Senbet, Salam. Here, here, here. We're in this Torah, um, you know, reading and feeding right here, here, here. Shabbat, Shalom. Oh, oh, just a, a little footnote. Yeah, it's Shabbat Shemini. Shemini in the Hebrew is Senbet um, Sementenyao. And the eighth day, we have the eighth day, very, very important sabbatical study here in the third book of Moshe, the Sefer Wayikra, the book of Leviticus, going through the sacrificial types, the pattern, learning more about pattern recognition, the allegorical types, therefore to recognize the Brit Hadash, the new covenant revelation in a new and a living way that he has consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say his flesh. So going through the eighth day, and we're speaking about the eighth day, it's interesting because the eighth day is also another euphemistic name for the first day. The first day falsely called in the latter days in this world system, Sunday, but we have the first day. So we get that creation or forming, Slika, that we get that, that reforming of man in Genesis chapter 2, right, on the eighth day and after. The eighth day and after. Because we get man in a general sense created. And if it's true that it was a thousand or in the thousands of years, then that would give at least the primitive creation, right, a couple of few thousand years. Right? If not even, it could be a hundred thousand. This is how the Hebrew uses thousands in a euphemistic sense, right? In a euphemistic or allegorical right sense. It's the context of scripture comparing scripture with scripture. So the eighth day, just want to point out the eighth day and Adam, Adam, he, right? Adam, he, and the eighth day and thereafter. Eighth day being a a synonymous name in the Hebrew with the first day on the morrow, the morrow after the Shabbat day. And since the Shabbat day is the seventh day, the eighth day, as it's used in the scripture, right, points to the first, the first day of the Shabua, the first day of the sabbatical set, the first day of the seven. So once again, Shabbat Shalom, Senbet Salam. I am Ras. I Adonis Tafari, this is Yadin right here, here, here. L-O-J, the Lion of Judah Society. Check us out at L-O-J-S dot O-R-G, L-O-J-S dot O-R-G.